Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. You know, I'm going to date myself here, but to be honest, I really wasn't very old when the book Love Story by Eric Siegel came out. But even at that young age, I thought there was something terribly wrong with its premise. Love means never having to say you're sorry. It didn't make much sense then, and it makes even less sense to me now. Now, I don't know if people took that line to heart, but it seems to me that the three hardest words in the English language to say are not, I love you, but actually, I am sorry. Apologies, meaningful, and heartfelt apologies, not the generic, mistakes were made kind, seem to leave those who need to hear them unfulfilled and those in the position to offer them breaking out in a cold sweat. So the question is, is it really necessary for apologies to be so difficult? Is there a way to make them easier and therefore more common? So to address this question, I'm joined by author and licensed clinical social worker, Robert Taby. Robert, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about this really, really important topic. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So you wrote a recent article that appears on the psychologytoday.com website. (laughs) Basically, you put it right out there, the art of the apology. And this caught my attention because I'm always looking for ways to help people get more comfortable with this. So why do apologies matter? And what is it about apologies that makes them so dang difficult? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. Yeah, for some folks, it's, uh, you know, it's it's probably what you said. It's probably the hardest things to ever, ever say. Uh, You know, the first part of the question, why are they important? is because I was, you know, I do a lot of work with couples and families and, you know, life is about kind of making mistakes and stumbling over yourself and other people. And in order to keep a relationship going, you got to fix it. You know, it's kind of like when the car breaks down, you don't abandon the car, you have to like get it (laughs) fixed. (laughs) And so apology is kind of the same thing, you know, where you stumble on something and something breaks down in the relationship you don't want to just kind of ignore it and make the radio go louder and hope the sound goes away. You, uh, <laughs> I think some you people actually, do. A lot of people do that, yeah, yeah, and that kind of works for a while. So, so the idea of apologizing is simply that, you know, it's to, it's to kind of repair a wound because I've met them, you've met them, you know, couples and families and people in relationships where they don't do that, you know, it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts, You know, Uh the wounds just kind of keep build up and build up. And then eventually somebody hits the bottom line, you know, and they say, I can't take it anymore. And they've stirred up all this resentment, not only about the wounding itself, but the fact that it's not acknowledged. And that's and that's what apologies are about. You know, acknowledging that, you know, I did something that hurt your feelings. Uh, You know, where people get stuck is they 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 get caught into I only apologize if I know I absolutely did something wrong, and now we get into <laughs> arguments about whose reality is right. You know, you're just oh, yes, too so sensitive. Always... You, you know, you're always assuming the worst, whatever. Right, and I always, I always love those arguments of, over reality. And it's like, yeah, if you don't have a video or an audio recording, then nobody's going to be able to prove exactly what was said because we actually remember it differently. And that's, you know, and you're talking about the idea of the person who will only apologize if they are crystal clear that they somehow were in the wrong. And when I run run into people like that, you know, my, my answer is, have you ever said to your child when they fall down and hurt themselves, oh, I'm so sorry, or if you, a friend, you know, loses, you know, their, their parent, and you go, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. It's like, well, did you kill the person? No. Right, 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 but right. You didn't push your kid down on the playground either. But, sure, sure. But somehow we, we don't seem to be able to connect that 
dot when you know we really didn't intend to cause any kind of hurt, but that's kind of what happened. Right, right. And and again, I think that's that's where the rubber meets the road. It's about that. If people get stuck in the idea that it is about whether it's right or wrong and whether I really did commit this uh, sin or whatever you want to call it, yeah, then, then we kind of get into the weeds. And that's not the purpose of an apology. Apology is just acknowledging, you know, that the person was hurt and even, you know, intentionally or not intentionally, it doesn't really matter. But the fact that the person was hurt, you want to acknowledge that that's not what you hope to do in the relationship, you know, and, and you, it's taking responsibility. It's called being grown up. <laughs> Oh, now there's a concept for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, and we know people, you know people where they don't do that. You know, they, they always blame other people for stuff. You know, all the talk these days about narcissism. You know, mm. people who are narcissistic, they, they always blame other people. They never take responsibility. They always deflect. And, um, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and it's, and it's really interesting because, you know, in, in, and you see this with businesses. You see this. You know, you get lawyers involved. It's like, I mean, you know, don't don't ever admit anything because you're opening things up. You know, but but sometimes just the just the apology can right. you know can because it's about being heard. It's about being heard, and it's about being recognized. And sometimes that apology is all that's needed for that person to feel not necessarily whole because that's, you know, that takes some other stuff, but at least sure. it's the first step to healing that it's like, oh, my gosh, somebody is recognizing that th- there was something about this interaction or event or whatever that was not okay, and they're sure. taking their part of it. And, I mean, you know, and it's the thing that about intention it's like, I know that my husband would never intentionally hurt me. So right. when I'm hurt and it's coming from him, it's, he doesn't know something. There's, he, you know, and so I need to tell him. I need to say, you know, I know that you probably didn't mean this, but that, that thing that just happened really hurt my feelings. Yeah. And, 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 and he'll go, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's a, you know, I'm glad you said that. That's a really good point, particularly – um, particularly in the beginning of a relationship, I spend a lot of time when I work with couples, for example, where I talk a lot about, you know, knowing what each other's emotional wounds are and what emotional mm-hmm. wounds is about is just what are you particularly sensitive to? You know, I'm sensitive to being micromanaged or I'm sensitive to being criticized or I'm sensitive to not being appreciated. It's usually one of a handful of things, but part right. of navigating the relationship and truly understanding the other person is knowing what that sensitivity is. You know, if I'm, if, uh, you know, if I know my, my wife is particularly sensitive to being criticized and micromanaged, that doesn't mean I have to bite my tongue and never say anything. I just need to be considerate and careful and exactly what you're saying. You know, the first, you know, the first few months or years in a relationship, the fact that she says that really hurt my feelings or that felt critical or whatever it was, is important information for me to know right? in terms of navigating this relationship. And I'm so glad you talk about sensitivities because that's really what it is. And even though my husband knows what two of my major sensitivities are, on occasion he has no idea that what he is about to do is going to trigger one of them. He only knows after the fact when when it's like – I have this reaction, and he, sure. and, and he never intends to do it. So it's like I, I tell people it's like, it's like a minefield, and I, have, I know where all the mines are located. My husband yep. only knows where some of them are located. So on occasion, he'll step on one. And, Absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and then he apologizes for you know, what he did, and he's learning, and then I also apologize for my reaction. Because yeah, I yeah. still own what I did. 
Right. Yeah. And, and again, you, you, you know, you don't want to get into whose reality is right. This is where people go, oh, you're just too sensitive, you know, oh, yeah. and kind of dismiss how they're feeling. You know, you, right. you don't want to go there. It's, it's about that adds you, insult to injury. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the other thing that you said is also true, I think, which is, you know, kind of what, what you were saying about lawyers, where I think sometimes it's family culture. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just the person's individual psychology. But there is sort of this association that if I apologize, I'm now vulnerable. You know, I'm in a one down kind of position that for whatever reason, their view of the world is if you kind of admit mistakes or admit any kind of vulnerability, people are going to take advantage of you. And, and, that's, and so they stop. They stop doing that. And obviously what they wind up doing is they have self-fulfilling prophecies. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to go to something else because I, I talked about it in the beginning and you know, one of the ways that people apologize is not really apologize, kind of the proverbial, well, mistakes were made. Like somehow they're completely unattached to any living being. It's just like something out there. So what are some other ways that are ineffective apologies or that people shouldn't actually do? I mean, we talked about the you're too sensitive, which, of course, isn't an apology at all. (laughs) Right. But but specifically about apologies. Yeah. um, Yeah, there's a couple of things. I mean, one is I think, uh, you know, where some some folks get into – sort of a power struggle blink contest standoff, you know, I'll apologize, but you have to apologize first, you know, and they kind of, right. you know, they have this power struggle um, mm-hmm. for forever about this, um, which obviously doesn't particularly go anywhere. Um, and, but the other, you know, and then the mechanics, of, and then you get the people who do the mumbled, sorry, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> You right. Know, and you know, and it's basically to just kind of get the other person off their back or to get, you know, to just kind of put an end to the conversation. And that's where what you're saying before, it's not a sincere p- apology. They're just kind of going through the motions. It's kind of like, you know, the mom who makes the six year old apologize to the friend who hit him on the playground. <laughs> you, you know, the kid isn't really into sincere apologies. He's just doing it because the mother told him to say he's sorry. Uh, right. or, 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 or tell your brother you're sorry. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's even worse within families. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sorry. <laughs> right, right. I'm just saying it so mom doesn't, you know, put me in time out for the rest of my life. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so part of it is that. And then part of it is, um, you, you know, to have a, not a conversation about your crimes, but just to kind of help what you were saying before. You know, it doesn't have to be long. It could be a three-minute conversation, but it's about both sides kind of de- deconstructing what happened, you know, enough to learn a lesson from it. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when, I, when I talk to couples who talk about having this big argument on Saturday night or whatever has gone on, usually my, my next statement is, okay, what did you learn from this argument? You know, what's uh-huh. the moral of the story of this argument? And partly it's about the content of it, you know, whatever they were fighting about, and we need to, like, you know, get on the same page about raising the kids yeah, or we need to, that. whatever. But the other part is about the process. You know, the other part is about, yeah, you know, when you start wagging your finger at me or you start bringing up the past or whatever it is, that's the stuff that pushes my buttons or that's the stuff that hurts my feelings. And, again, what you were saying before, you know, life is a process of elimination where you make mistakes and you learn from them. And so, you know, for any couple in any kind of relationship, just spending a few minutes just kind of deconstructing it, not to rub salt in anybody's wounds, not Uh to get defensive, not to do any of that kind of stuff. This is where I I have a hard time with uh, people who text stuff. (laughs) You know, know, you're you're, you're going back to evidence. You know, you've seen it, I've seen it, where... I have couples coming in, you know, and they start, you want, can I read the text? Can I, can I read the text? Right. You know, and then yeah. they start, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh. it's like a, a courtroom, you know, evidence. You know, here's what he said. 
but but of course, you know what the other person, I said I didn't I didn't I w- I didn't say it like that. I just wrote right. that. It doesn't mean I was angry. I wasn't saying that. You're the one who put in the period there or the exclamation. It just gets crazy. And well, so yeah, I have a real hard. Yeah, I mean, even if you stick in an emoji, it's like it's something. Yeah. Milk because, because I mean, and, and I've talked about this on the show before about yeah. you know in communication. The the actual words we use is is less right. than ten percent of of what gets communicated. Absolutely, and so, absolutely. You know, to me, texting works really well if it's just can you stop by the grocery store on the way home and get some milk, or <laughs> right. I'm yeah. late, I'll be there in fifteen minutes. Yeah, and absolutely. You know, as opposed yeah. to these people who try to have you know, and and unfortunately, I, I've gone a little crazy more with my daughter than my son. Um, because my daughter would be like texting. I said, you know, if you if you just actually dialed the phone, you would get this conversation. <laughs> it's like, oh, mom, I mean, that's since 1980s. What oh, are you talking I about? I know, right. I know. It's you know, right. it's, well, they they have to deal with the Luddite that is their mother. But you know, but you know, and and I think part of that is is because there's a there's a sense of safety, and I get that. I understand right. why people want to use these technologies. Um, and we're right. going to talk about a, a better way to do that in just a minute. But I, I know that in the article, you you basically said if if what you text is "I am sorry," that's okay. Right. <laughs> Go no right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, so yeah, this the- is happily. This is happily ever after is just the beginning on WebTalkRadio.net. I'm talking with author and licensed clinical social worker Robert Tabey about the art of the apology. And if you struggle with either giving an apology or, on the flip side, actually getting one, you're not alone. A real apology can go a long way towards repairing a breach, even one that wasn't intended. So being able to apologize well is a skill that can put your marriage on solid footing. And if you'd like to know how to do that, I encourage you to contact me today and schedule your free, no obligation, happily ever after is just the beginning strategy session. You can reach me at area code 919-924-0463. Again, that's 919-924-0463. Or you can send me an email at leslie, L-E-S-L-I, at foundationscoachingnc.com. That's F-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N-S, coaching, N as in Nancy, C as in Charlie.com. Now I want to get back to the conversation about how to apologize well. So, Robert, what are some more effective ways of apologizing? We say, it's like, don't do it by text. Right, don't do it by text. We got that. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of... Um, doing emails, and I have a couple okay. of reasons for that. I know yeah, that's kind of old school as too. well, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, for a couple of reasons, though, and um, one is that it gives you a chance to the person who's going to apologize. It gives you a chance to kind of craft your words. I mean, you kind of uh-huh. do it with texting, but but just. Just physically, in terms of doing an email, you, you have more space. You're, you can think, think more broadly. So it gives you a chance to kind of pick your words. Um, you can carefully kind of craft what you want to say. And rather than – I think sometimes for a lot of folks, even talking on the phone is difficult, you know, uh-huh. on, both, on both sides. You call somebody up, you're kind of – you yourself are kind of – sort of put on the spot and you're trying to say something, you know, and you catch the other person off guard oftentimes and they're kind of taken by surprise and they uh-huh. don't know what they say and they can't really process what you're talking about or they're in a bad mood already and they're stressed out, <laughs> you know, and so they overreact and whatever. Um, so the, the idea behind having an email is you can write out. You know, back yeah. back 30 years ago, we'd be sending a letter. <laughs> We're not going to mm-hmm. do that anymore. But you said, but essentially, you and so what you put in the email is kind of what you learned in school. You know, you got your topic sentence. I'm writing to you because I just want to apologize for whatever I said the other day or whatever. The other uh-huh. part of it, though, is now you put into it 
the backstory, the backstory about why you said what you said, not in a defensive kind of way, you know, well, you Critical. said this first, and so I was just doing that. Right. But more in terms of, you know, what I talk to folks about is you talk about soft emotions, soft emotions like concern and worry and things of that sort. Mm-hmm. And, you, and you kind of explain, you give the backstory about, you know, what was going on inside you. Because what they, you know, people, people see your behaviors, they have no idea what your intentions are. So your job is to explain your intentions. You know, I wasn't trying uh-huh. to hurt your feelings. I was just getting really worried and anxious when you were talking about this. You know, uh-huh. and I'm sorry if I came on too strong or whatever it was. And uh-huh. the other advantage of having an email is you can put into it, it's kind of like planning the conversation, put into it anything you think the other guy is going to think. So you say, I'm not trying to be critical. You know, I'm not making it sound like I don't want you to think it's your fault. I'm not mm-hmm. saying, you know, whatever you think they're going to think, put it in there at the front end. So you're sort of emotionally cutting them off at the, pa- at the pass so they can better hear what you're saying. But also so you, not making assumptions about what they're thinking because that's all that's right. thinking and feeling. That, right. That's a critical right. component too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you have, so you have time and space to kind of craft it, and then you send it off. Now, part B is what I'm going to say is you're not done. Part B now <laughs> is, is you kind of lay the work. And, again, the advantage on, for on the other side is they have time to pro- – you're not, you're not calling them up at 10 o'clock at night when they're tired and have three beers and they can't process what you're saying. You're gonna, uh-huh. you, they, can, they can get the email. They can read it over. They got a chance to kind of consider what you're really saying, whatever. Now your job is to follow up. And this is where I would do a phone call, okay. not a text, not another email. But I call them up and go, you know, I, and even say that perhaps in the email. Say, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to close the door on this topic. I'd like to talk to you about it. I'll give you a call this weekend. Right, so or, if it's your, or if it's your spouse, say, you know, can, can we talk about it? I, I would really love to take some time on yeah, that yeah, yeah. to yeah. talk about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, and, and do, I do a face-to-face. Yeah, there's a critical piece about the difference between a text and an email because we were talking earlier about the challenge of it just being words. But with an email, we can let it sit for a little while. I mean, yep. it's just going to sit on our computer or wherever it's going to sit, and it's not going to cause yep. any problem. And we can go back to it later before we actually send it, which, by the way, I actually highly recommend that you give right. a little bit of time from the time you write it to the time you send it to make sure to go back. Because here's the deal, and this is partially, I think, why we end up in a position where apologies are helpful, is we know what we mean. And so when I write something, I know what I meant to say. Or if I say something, I know what the motivation was. And so I have to separate myself out from that to go, oh, there's another way of reading this that I didn't think about. And that's usually how we ended up in the miscommunication and the challenge and the hurt feelings anyway. It's because there was a, I was like, oh, I had no idea that it was going to be received in a different way than it was meant. Right. Right. And, and the same thing is true on the other side. The person who get, I mean, there's something, again, sort of, uh, uh, sort of psychological about getting a text. You know, the, mm-hmm. our brain is one to kind of just read it right away. You know, and respond and to it right away. It. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you get an email at 11 o'clock at night from somebody, you know, and you know you're tired, it, it can <laughs> sit on your computer. You know, you're not going to mm-hmm. have that same physical kind of reaction to have to respond to it. And then you can read it over several times. You know, so the first time you read it, you're going to get a little annoyed or you're going to feel angry or you're going to feel hurt, but then you uh-huh. kind of go through it again. Um, and, that, and that's the purpose of, you know, having the follow-up as well. So, you know, three days later, you call the person up or you schedule a time to have lunch or something, and now it's to further process it. You know, did you get my email? What did you think? Right. You know, does it make sense? Yeah, and I do think that a, an important part of the apology process, whether and, – and probably if, if somebody is doing it with an email first before actually having a face-to-face, but I think it needs to come somewhere 
early, probably before the explanation of what was going on inside of my head, is right. an acknowledgement, a validation of the mm-hmm. other person being hurt. Because usually Absolutely. that's the piece that if that's that, not there, right. then it doesn't matter what else is said. That it's seen right. as, yeah. oh, you're blowing this off, you don't take it seriously, I'm not important, and now we're back to a whole other <laughs> level. Right. And, and, and that's what I was saying. It's back to high school, what's your topic sentence? You know, the topic <laughs> sentence is, is, is that. You know, I'm, I'm, writing, you know, I'm writing to you to, you know, just to apologize for what I said the other day. That's your, that's your first sentence. You know, so, mm-hmm. so you're already setting the tone. So we're talking so, about ways in which um, apologies are helpful and, and good ways to apologize. But what happens if your apology isn't accepted? Yeah. Yeah, I've, um, I've, I've, I've had, um, this is sort of sidebar kind of conversation, but I've had a number of people, for example, where it could have come from either side of the fence, parents or ki- like parents of adult children. Uh-huh. I remember seeing, you know, a couple, a couple of years ago, they were probably in their 50s, they came in, um, they, have, they have a daughter who was in their 30s, and they came in, and they're saying, you know, we just went out to see my daughter for Christmas, and we brought Christmas presents to the kids, and we had a great time, and now we get this, and it's like a month later, it's like in January, and they're coming in with carrying this, flopping this email, and what the email is, something of daughter saying, I remember, you know, when at the time when I was a kid that you never did this and that and da, 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 da. it was kind of this ranty email. And the bottom line is, and never talk to me again. Wow. <laughs> and, and this is not, I've heard this a lot. This is not uncommon, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. particularly for people in their early to mid thirties. I think they go through a period of kind of reflecting on their past to kind of look at it from a different perspective. Anyhow, the parents come in and they go, we don't know what to do about this. You know, and what I usually say is, and and they say, never talk to me again. (laughs) You know, so they Uh go, all right. So we're kind of in this bind where they're saying never talk to me again, but we also want to respond. So, you know, what I usually wind up suggesting is go ahead and respond and, and apologize. Exactly. We're mm-hmm. not going to get into whose reality is right and what are you talking about and you and know, why are you we, up stuff from twenty years ago and right, all that right you can no, don't do that you can accept her, her <laughs> reality and you want to apologize you same for the same thing intentional or not you want to apologize because her feelings are hurt and now, I think that's a really ha- critical point that we're right. we're not yes there may be something about our behavior that we need to examine and own and apologize for. But most of the time, it's about the other person's hurt feelings. Right. And so the answer to your question is, so now they do that. You know, they send an email back or they leave a voicemail message or whatever. And sometimes the person will say, I told you, I don't, 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 don't talk don't to me ever again. Door, right? What don't you understand about no? And so that, to answer your question, what happens if, you, if the people don't respond? You know, if you send the email or, you know, the parents had to deal with. The bottom line is, all right, you try one more time. You know, you try one more time. You offer the olive branch. You try to heal the wound as best you can. And at a certain point, you have to stop. I mean, at a certain point, you realize what's the best you can do. I mean, I'm always saying this to, to clients that I see. You know, the bottom line is usually what's the best you can do. Well, the best you can do is be generous. The best you can do is be clear. The best you can mm-hmm. do is accept responsibility for your actions. You know, the right. best you can do is help people understand your intentions or what make you, makes, makes you tick so they don't look at you through a dis- distorted lens. That's the best you can do. Once you do this, you're done. You know, you've done the best you can. Now, again, do you cut them off? Do you never talk to them again? I, you know, this is, you know, depends. You know, what I said to this couple is, you know, I would keep sending, you know, the Christmas cards to the grandkids, you know, uh-huh. or to the yeah, birthday, birthday presents, cards. just so you don't yeah. shut down the door, you know, just so you don't totally close it off. Because what happens 
is you're ha- if you're having one of these longstanding feuds, it does become a blink contest, you know, where where because the door is closed, now it becomes harder and harder to open it up. So you send right. an email, you check in once a week or every couple of months and go, hope you're doing well, a one-liner, and they'll, and they'll throw it out. <laughs> you know, they'll th- and that's fine. Well, but it, but well, you're doing the best you can. You're trying well, to keep the door open. A, yeah, and I think it's important to recognize in this, and, and I think this may be you know, part of history with apologizing and whether or not we should or whatever, is that we cannot control how it is received. We can only control our effort in doing yes. it. And, and if it's not received well, that one, we could take a look and say, okay, did I – did I not fully apologize? Was there something that I was missing? Sure. Or, but if, but if I look through it and go, no, I really think I did a pretty excellent job of apologizing, and then the other person is either not ready or not willing to accept it, it's letting that go. Um, right. Not necessarily letting the person go, but letting, but letting that go. And then if this does seem to be a pattern of behavior, then there's a real question about, you know, I'm really curious about what, what goes on with the apologies that have been given and not received. Right. You know, what's that about? Right. And, you know, yeah. it's kind of, because, because sometimes, again, that's about learning that maybe they wanted something acknowledged that, again, we didn't know about, and of course now this goes back into the mind-reading school of relationships. It's like, sure. I mean, you got to, you know, and, you know, that, well, you know, and it's like, well, I shouldn't have to tell you why I'm upset. It's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, please. Um, uh, yeah. No, you, <laughs> you say why you're upset. Yeah. Right. right. Because, again, that's the grown-up thing to do, and we're not expecting other people to do this. And, you know, and, and it can be really hard, but, but the fact that an apology isn't accepted doesn't absolve us of, not, of, of giving it in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember, and, 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 you know, this is the other thing that gets a little, I remember seeing somebody a few years ago who, he, the, the guy was middle-aged, and I don't know what particularly triggered it, but he had some real remorse and regret about how he ended a relationship with a woman when he was, like, in college or something, uh-huh. you know, and he just, he just felt bad about it. You know, he said, you know, it's kind of, I'm happily married now, you know, and I haven't talked to this person in 20 years, but this, for some reason, this has come up and it's kind of nagging me. I feel, I feel bad about what I did. And he, he came in because he wanted, he was trying to sort out what to say and should he say something and should he not? It was kind of actually difficult to kind of sort through. And the difficulty uh-huh. part was he was clear that he felt like he wanted to say something. But the difficult part was, was he stirring up old wounds, you know, or was mm-hmm. he not knowing and having seen the person in 20 years? Sure. He had no idea how the other person might react, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, should he or should not? And that was a difficult call for him. I mean, he had to sort it through. And we spent time just kind of kind of crafting the email, you know, and exactly what would he want to say. And, and part of it, he put that in the email. You know, he right. said, I know this may come at us seem sort of out of out of nowhere, and I hope it doesn't upset you or just kind of stir up old feelings. I'm just trying to – but those kind of situations can get hard to sort through, you know, if, sure. if it's something from the long past. But, again, he did it because he needed to get some closure. Right, because because it was, it was something that he felt a responsibility for. And so that – Right. You know, and I think that's an important thing that we can – that this is a process and we can always learn to do it better. Um, right. And whether that's with somebody in our life now or somebody who hasn't been in our life or even going back to say maybe the couple and their daughter, that there's an old sure. wound that, right. you know, I may, I may not have even known had happened, but obviously right. it was something that upset this other person. And, sure. you know, am I willing to, 
step up now. So this has been a really interesting conversation. So, Robert, can you tell people where they can learn more about you and do, read some of the wonderful stuff that you write about the art of the apology? Sure, sure. I, um, I, have, uh, I do have a Psychology Today blog. It has about 300 articles on there from everything from all parts of relationships to how to cope with anxiety and children. It's called, it's on Psychology Today. It's the uh, blog is called Fixing Families. And if you just kind of plug in my name, Robert Taibbi, T-A-I-B-B-I, um, you'll find a whole slew of articles and the one on apologies is right there. Also, there's one sure. about how to, how to heal estranged relationships. So kind of what else we were talking about is on there. Um, and then I also have my website. I have articles on there as well. And uh, I'm in private practice here in, in Virginia. And so what's that website? Uh, it's my name. It's bobtaby.com. Okay, terrific. So what I want people to remember is that giving an apology doesn't mean you did anything quote-unquote wrong in the absolute value sense of the word. It means that there was somehow a breach in your relationship and somebody is hurting. And accepting an apology doesn't mean that the behavior, the breach was okay, only that you are releasing the hurt around it. Pride gets in the way of taking both of these actions, and quite frankly, damage is what results. So you can act in loving ways, or you can be prideful. You can't be both, and the choice and the health of your relationship is up to you. So hopefully you got something from this, and hopefully you'll keep listening. And until next week, stay loving. Stay loving.